Hello everybody, welcome back to the training of the Modicon M221. In this video, we're going to see how we can simulate the logic so we can test it. So let's go to the presentation. What we're going to do in this video is to simulate the code that we have done on the previous presentation. So this is our conveyor belt with the inputs and outputs predefined and we have already created our logic. Now it's time to test it. We have two possibilities. We can test our logic using the simulator or we can use the real PLC. In this case, we're gonna use the simulation. And in order to use the simulation, we need to go into this icon over here to launch the simulator. In case we have a problem trying to, trying to open the simulator saying that you have another port with the same uh, port dedicated for the simulation what you need to do is to go to the settings go to general and modify the ethernet port that your computer is using for the software if you don't have this message there is nothing to change and then it will open this little fella over here which is the simulator of the plc in your laptop if we click over this icon, it will give us a little bit more of details about the PLC, the firmware that it's using, and if, and if there is a problem of the AOS or there is a force input and output in our software. Just to let you know, when we click on each of these inputs, it will change the status. So if we click on one of these, it will turn to green, and if it's off, it will go to black. We also have on the left part, as you can see in here, the status of the PLC. So we can have um, a feedback of the actual behavior. If we continue with this. We have another way to launch the, the commissioning, okay, which is instead of being in programming, we can go to the commissioning. And if in commissioning, once we are connected, we can see that the project on the PC and the virtual controller, which is the simulator, is the same. Okay. And in order to activate on the commissioning, we just need to go to start the controller. Okay. Because the PLC. This virtual PLC, when you don't load, or you you don't load, but you launch the simulator, is in stop, and you need to make it run. So, in order to make it run, okay, we can use the icons on the top to make it run, and here we can see the status of the PLC, this virtual PLC. So. Once we launch the simulator, okay, we should be able to see the behavior of our code. We haven't touched anything, so this is the initial view that you can have. You can see everything is in false, okay? But this one allow me to connect because it's the negative, okay? So if we press on the input, it will activate the output. Not the output, but the percentage M and then the output. So, this is what I meant to you. When we click on one of the inputs on the simulator, it can activate and change the behavior on each of them. As you can see here, I, the, the normal behavior on this one, that's the negative contact is in false. So when I click on this one it, it, and the input is in one, true, okay, it changed the color, okay? it opened the circuit and it's the opposite when I go to the normal contact okay and it press the zero in this case as you can see it closed the contact now it's time to do the same in our project this is our project okay in order to launch we just go to here launch simulator we can also use control plus V Launch the simulator. It's open in the other window. You can see it here. You can see here the run is blinking. Okay. 
because it's in stop and I need to press in start. If we go to the commissioning, we can see that we have the possibility to start the controller and the PC and controller application are identical. So if we go programming, let's go to start controller. Okay, as you can see here, is running, is in run, and this one is solid run. If I click in here, okay, let's change this. It changed from false to true. And even if I click on the input zero, which is the start, is not going to start. So the logic is working. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to press again the sensor, now it's in false, and now I'm going to start this. So if I press the zero, it will start the motor. Okay, if we go to the motor output, it is start. So our logic seems to be fine. And now the idea is to stop the motors once it's reached the stop or the sensor. It reached the sensor or we press the stop. So I'm going to press the stop. I did the stop. Okay. I'm going to delete this part. Zero. Let's go back to the normal state. So so far this is how you can control the IOS of the PLC using the simulator. If I know wrong in this part and now we're going to explain to you how to use the force values. Good. So you can see here we have four three different elements. Okay. We have the input in a contact, we have the output in a coil, and we have the percentage M, the variables. As you can see here is the percentage M is in a contact and the percentage M is in a coil. If we click or we're trying to move the mouse over the contact, we have the possibility to force the value, force zero or force one. And the same for the output, but the output has the possibility to use the write so we can write an initial value, okay, 0 or 1, and then we also have the possibility to force the value. And for the marks, for the percentage M, we can write the 0 or the 1, false for 0 and true for 1, okay. And there is a note here, forcing is performed at the end of a cycle, so if you uh, it's important to note that when you write a value, it can be overwritten by your own logic. So that is something that you need to be aware of when you're trying to force or write a value. Because even if you force a value, it's going to be overwritten by your code and at the beginning. And probably the visualization can make you think that your logic is working when it's not. So what we're going to do now is to change the status of the coils using the simulator, okay, the force values, and then we are going to, oops, we are going to um, close the simulator. So let's go back here and bring the simulator over here. So here you can see force one, force zero. So we're going to force one it runs, okay, it forces in the software, not in the hardware, like it should be here, okay, in order to unforce this, just click once again the same force, now the motor is running, and in here I can force, or can I write on this one, okay, it's a mark, zero, I can also unforce this, force to one, force to one, and here, force to one, I'm going to uncheck it, and check it. Okay, good. So now, going here, I can force this, zero, but every time it's going to be executed anyway. I'm going to unforce it. Okay, so you need to be um, careful on this one. Probably this one, we're going to have any problems, okay, because is in the output, but as you can see here, 
if you leave the force okay this part doesn't make any sense because you have the one here it should be one but we are forcing this value okay so in the output you can see there is false okay and even if you let me just unforce this okay I'm going to disconnect even if you write this it will overwrite okay with this value and if I force it be in one because it doesn't really care in this part okay but you should be aware when you write and when you force the value in your code so I believe this is it for the simulation okay yes this is it if you have any questions you can contact us by email um, there is something else that you should know when you're working in the simulation um, there are some functionalities that are not allowed or you cannot test for example everything regarding communication if you are simulating the PLC you are shouldn't be able to test it using the virtual PLC you should have a real PLC and also there are some functionalities regarding to the high speed counter or from some input and output functionalities or advanced functionalities that you should have the real PLC in order to test it so this is very simple this part simulation you can simulate the code and then test if what you're trying to do is working or no so thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one Thank you.